we're going to take a look at our PVC. Again, technology is changing dramatically. Uh, I, th I remember when PVC first came out. I was at the JLC show in Providence, and uh, <laughs> I remember Tom and I were walking past the booth. We, we stopped and I looked at it, and I said, you got to be kidding me. Who in the world would put plastic on the outside of their house? That was, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. Well, boy, was I wrong, huh? It is a really durable exterior material. It's really nice stuff. And Versatex is the sponsor for this event. And what I really wanted to do, most of you guys know how to work with wood and PVC. I don't need to show you how to do things, but I just wanted to show you some really cool stuff that they came out with that's pretty new. Building a column like this, you guys have done that, right? How long will it take you to build a column like that? Just give me an estimate. Eight foot column, you want a crown on the top, a little bed molding, dress it up. How long do you think that would take you guys? Anybody? An hour, two, three, four, five, half a day? No guess? A day? Yeah, if you're doing a few of them. And the idea there is to try to, you know, to, to really do a whole bunch. Now, most of us like to have nice, clean joints like this, but getting a miter joint on the outside of PVC, that's really tough. But you notice there's no nails here? This is actually a pretty cool kit. I'm going to show you how this kit goes together. Because Versatex has come out with some really slick stuff. So let me just grab a few pieces. Here's a column wrap kit that comes from Versatex. Get my Simpson stuff out of the way. And here's the start to the kit. find the open part of it here. There we go. Here's what the column wrap looks like. It's already been pre-cut for you. So all you need to do, it comes I think about eight and a half foot long. Cut the six inch. This is a six inch column. You can get it six inch and eight inch. And all the joints are taped together. And the reason for that is what you'll do, once you've cut it to length, make sure these joints are nice and clean. This is their Weld On 705 PVC glue. PVC, when you're gluing PVC together, you really don't want to do both sides of the joint with glue. You want to do one side. This is more like a molecular bond or a chemical bond. When you put the glue on one side, it reaches across to the other. So when gluing PVC, it's going to be a little bit different. And here's how you do the column wrap. Now, obviously, if you have a column, a post already, what you'll need to do is we'll lay this out. I'm going to put glue on one side of my joint here. I don't need to go crazy with this. So I've got my three joints together, and this will just fold up. And at that point, you can wrap it around the post, just like that. And then fold this one over in front of it. Tom, I might need a hand with, with this for a little bit. Now obviously, you need, with a regular post configuration, you're going to pad this out first. What I'll usually do is I'll take some blocks of PVC and I can throw blocks of PVC in here or you can throw an extra two by in. Just leave a little wiggle room. Don't make it too tight because the wood underneath here is going to move a little bit. It's either going to shrink, it could expand when it takes moisture up. So don't make it so tight uh, that you have pressure in there. We're just going to kind of lay it over. And I'll take my glue now and I'm going to run it through this groove. And just on the outside of this miter joint, I'm going to lock this together. So Tom, if you could hold that, let me get a scrap piece of PVC, kind of line that up. You may want to get a clamp on here. I've got Tom's hands going to act as a clamp. Get that joint together and just take that scrap and work your way all the way up. So I've got my post wrap done. <laughs> that would have taken me a, probably 45 minutes just to get the four pieces sized and put together. I'll tell you one caution. These corners are razor sharp because they do this on a machine. So what you'll want to do is probably take a piece, let it set a little bit. Don't do it right away. But just take a piece of 320 grit. Make sure it's 320 grit. The 320 grit with Versatex, they designed the surface 
so that when you sand it with a 320 grit paper, it will match the same texture on the exterior. So that's the neat thing about Versatex. So that's our column. Now if you want to just go ahead and trim that out, it's just straight column. You could put your crown molding on top of this. You could put a little be base piece around here. But we're going to do a little bit of a build up. This is kind of neat, uh, something that uh, Versatex has. This is their 8 inch column. And this 8 inch column goes together the same way. So I'll take a piece of 8 inch column, I'm going to do the same thing. Tom and I will pop this together. Normally you'll do this around the post, but since I have an open end here, it's not going to be a problem. We'll just assemble this really quick. Get my block and tap this together. And here's where my spacers come in. I'll take my spacers and again, I'm just assembling this so you guys can see how this goes together. I'm not going to nail it off. And use a screw, get this exactly where I want it. And the next thing I need to build is the bed molding that goes on top of this. This is the real hard part, is cutting and doing all the bed molding. Let me grab a bed molding wrap here. I think I have a six inch. Yep, here's my bed molding. This is really slick. You can like this one. Anybody know what a Hoffman joint is? Nobody knows what a Hoffman joint is? That's all right, I didn't either. I'll show you a Hoffman joint. Just give me a second. This is a kit. It comes all pre-cut. So you don't have to have the sharpest carpenter in the, in the crew doing this. Hoffman joint, you've seen, like it looks like a dovetail joint. Maybe you've seen some old tables built this way where they have a little... It looks like a, a dovetail joint where they drive it into the top of the table. Well, there's a company that makes this joint. These are called, it's a Hoffman machine. And what I can do with this is use this little key and we can put these, our stuff together, our trim together just like this. The joints just push together. So what I'll do is I'll assemble one on my little layup table here. I'm not going to glue this because I only have one of these kits that fits this column. I'm going to reuse this a number of times. I just want to show you how it goes together. We'll set our hop and join in. I like to work kind of on a table to square it up. So that's one. Put them in from the top and we'll just assemble them. I already got one in here. That was a dumb move. Okay, push that together. There's a lot of skill involved here, isn't there? It's like a little erective set. But part of, the most expensive part of our job is what? It's labor. Look at all the labor you're going to save. I'm not going back and forth to my miter saw. Now, this will slip over the top. Obviously, you can't do that in a situation like this, so that's no problem. Just leave out the one piece, put the three sides around it, glue it together, and then you've got that. Now for the top, I'm not going to go fancy like that. I could take another, like I did over here, I could take another 8 inch piece, secure that to the top, take another piece of this bed, and just like I did on that column, I slip that up underneath. But instead what I'll do is just, we're just going to do a, I should have a 6 inch crown here. This is a 6 inch crown kit. Same thing. So here's my little cap. Now again, you could... This is going to go over the top. This should drop over. I've got tape in the way, so it's going to be a little tough for me to get this on. Yeah, that tape is holding me up. It'd be easier to put that last piece on. Right on the board there. Oh. Yeah, I could take that off. Take off one side. Pull the tape down, Tom. Be nice to show them the outside of the corner anyway. Now, the tape, you want to take this tape off after it's set. And once the glue is dried, I'd give it probably an hour or two. It's 24 hours for a final set. 24 hours will come to full strength, but the tape is what's going to hold this whole thing together. Because once the tape comes off, the, the column will kind of come apart. So be gentle with it. Did you get enough off there, Tom? See if I can get the rest of this off. 
I just loosened my Hoffman joint up a little. Let me try to get over that, Tom. Slip that one on top. So I just want to do one other thing with their little kit. It's a little tight. Still got to get the rest of the tape off. All right, we're just going to let this sit up top for now. I've also got to ease those corners a tiny bit. So there's, there's my crown. Again, it will fit. It went around the top of that really easy before. There's other profiles I'm not going to install. This is, a, uh, this is the base molding. So there's a base molding for the 8 inch and for the 6 inch. Goes together the same way with the Hoffman key. And quick and easy way to build a column wrap in 6 and 8 inches. The other thing that they have was the soffit system. I was really impressed with this. And it's a three piece system. This is the freeze board. If this were not a porch wrap, say this was a freeze board on a traditional house, it's got a three quarter inch reveal or a rabbit on the back. That's for your siding. So when you put this up on the house, your siding is going to come up underneath that. So you're not worrying about type in any type of a transition there. You bring your siding right up under. It's really slick. We had to cut that off for this application here. And so what we'll do, and Tom, maybe did you uh, register this? Or I think I've got it. You got the mark on that? Just give it a tack. Where's your line? Oh, there it is. OK, I didn't see that. All right, so Tom, just tack that up. Now, this is not the proper way to install PVC trim. You don't install it with a T-nailer. It won't, it'll never stay there. One thing you have to remember about PVC is it's temperature sensitive. So a couple of things to keep in mind. Good fastening restricts the amount of movement that your PVC will have. So if you fasten it well, and that, what I mean by fastening, you want to screw the boards right to your substrate. Make sure they're screwed. And what's even better is if you glue it. A good polyurethane glue is important to use. If you put the glue on first, then you screw it, you're gonna restrict the amount of movement. And keep in mind one other thing when you're dealing with PVC, because it's so temperature sensitive, if you leave it out in the driveway when you're working, say it's a day like today, today's almost 70 degrees outside, it's the best day to install PVC trim, 70 degrees. Because it's sort of right in the middle of its expansion and contraction range. It can go up to 95, 100, or it could go down to, say, 30 degrees. So you're right in the middle range. But if you leave it out in the driveway before you're working with it, and the temperature of your PVC is at 90 when you install it, say 90 to the touch, and you install it thinking it's 70, but you get back there the next morning, it's going to, all these gaps are going to show up. So make sure that you store it in a nice, covered space so that it's the same temperature of the air so that you don't have problems with installation. One of the other problems with our new modern type of um, soffits is ventilation. They often don't meet the ventilation code requirements and trying to get that done is really tough. So what Versatex came out with is this new vented soffit and it goes along with this stealth system. So the vented soffit, all you need to do is cut it to size Slip that in. Give me the T. Yeah, I'm just going to tack it, Tom, just to hold it. Just hold it. Now, notice I've got it out uh, almost uh, 3 eighths plus hanging out the front so that our last piece on is the fascia. Now, the fascia comes, it's about an 8 inch fascia, it comes with that same groove. And so, what I can do with that, same thing, it's going to lock right over that. And now I've got a composite system here it's really slick it's easy to use keep in mind too this is PVC it's gonna move that's okay so you don't want to overly fasten this joint in here but what we'll do is make sure that this the fascia is not gonna move that's why we have a good sub fascia we're gonna use a polyurethane type of its sealant behind that and then we'll screw this into position and that's gonna finalize the entire system I'm just gonna tack it just to hold it so you guys can see it and this is all part of this whole line of material that Versatex came out with to make our jobs a lot easier. One thing about the company that I like is they listen to contractors. And I was on a job one day and this guy pulls up and he's talking to me about the PVC we're installing and asking me all these questions. I had no idea who he was. He was the president of the company, came out to my job site and was just saying, well, what would make your job easier? Versatex is very, very much attuned to what the contractor's needs are. That's why they do a lot of the stealth components so that you can do window wraps, you can do all of these different trim details 
and not spend a lot of time on it.